What's up, everybody? This is probably one of the Internet's best-kept secrets. John Worrell Keeley, he's an inventor from the late 1800s that invented several different types of machines on the principle of sympathetic vibrations. And some of this sounds very plausible, some of it not so much, but a few people of considerable fame spoke very highly of his accomplishments, like Madame Blavatsky, Tesla, and Rudolf Steiner. I've known about Keeley for a couple years now, and I, I already know I'm going to live to regret putting this video out, because I know in two weeks, I'm going to have a video pop up in my feed saying, See, I told you so. 200 years ago, they were levitating stone with vibrational residents, and act like everybody used this stuff all the time, because this one guy might or might not have invented a crazy machine. If everybody knew about this and were using these all over the world to build buildings, then why would this guy be special about his machine? Well, it's probably because this one guy was the only person that knew about this technology. To the point, and this is a huge red flag, that he was the only one that could get them to function. So I'm going to go through the red flags first, but don't write him off just yet, because this engineer, Dale Pond, got a hold of one of his machines... Spent years trying to figure out what it was supposed to do and said he got it started up one time and said it was like it came alive. And he says that this works opposite of what we're used to with, you know, combustion and expanding gases and that this works through an implosive force and cavitation. If you look him up, this is what you're going to get in 1873. He announced that he had discovered a new physical force, one that if harnessed would produce unheard of power. He claimed, for example, to be able to produce from a quart of water enough fuel to move a 30-car train from Philadelphia to New York City on a quart of water. He made a great show of guarding the secret of the motor he was developing to obtain power from a, quote, intermolecular vibration of ether. Of course, scientists and engineers scoffed at his unverified claims. After his life, an investigation was carried out and... They say that his shop had hidden compressed air tubes and hydraulic power activating the machinery. So, yeah, all official sources say this guy was straight up a fraud. Well, the J.D. Rock Foundation spent a huge amount of money making Royal Rife and his machine that supposedly cured cancer and all kinds of things out to be a quack in support of oil-based medicines. So I think they would spend even more to discredit someone that could make oil obsolete because he had an engine that would run on water. Now, speaking of his machines just being a gimmick that ran on compressed air, Keeley claimed that the relative frequency of all sympathetic streams is in the ratio 3, 6, 9. Those who re whose relative frequencies are 3 to 9 are mutually attractive, while those having a relation of 6 to 9 are mutually repellent. Now, that might sound familiar because Tesla famously said, if you only knew the magnificence of the 3, 6, and 9, then you would have a key to the universe. Well, he got this from Keeley, and as far as his machines running on compressed air, I don't think Tesla would have been fooled by some idiot with some hidden air hoses. Also, Professor Brenton of the University of Pennsylvania was famously known for hanging out with Keeley in his lab and a big fan of his work. So I don't think that people of this caliber were fooled by just compressed air machines. Also, Dale Pond, uh, engineer, got a hold of one of these machines and said that it was, you know, kind of in the back storehouse of a museum labeled as a perpetual motion machine, which everybody automatically assumes that it's a fraud. I'll try to remember to leave a link for this, but if you just look up John Worrell Keeley, this will come up. And it's 2.6 thousand views, a year old right now. I'm going to guess after this, within six months, it'll have 100,000 views. <laughs> because what he describes is impressive. And he basically goes into a whole new form of physics. Now, Keeley invented several different machines, and the one that Del Pond got a hold of was just one iteration that ended up getting abandoned, and he moved on to other things. But Del Pond spent years pondering over this machine and finally figured out how to make it work. And me oversimplifying what he described was, it works off the principle of a water hammer. 
if you've ever been in a house where you, you turn off the faucet and you hear a cocoon in the walls, that's a water hammer effect. So basically you have a valve that shuts. It causes that water hammer and sends the vibration and energy back the other way to another valve that shuts, amplifying it. And this part I don't quite understand. He says within seven back and forth, it, the energy output goes to infinity. But if it went to infinity, it seems like the machine would just fly into pieces. And he also describes a cavitation happening in each one of those back and forth. He says that Keeley had a lifelong interest in sympathetic vibration, which is a well-known force in physics. It's the tuning fork scenario where if you ring one tuning fork, then the other one is going to start sympathetically vibrating as long as they're both tuned to the same frequency. He said that the energy output of this was so intense that it would actually produce microwave radiation from a mechanical machine, and he said he blew out the back of his laboratory more than once. Keeley made 129 different iterations of this machine based on this principle of cavitation, acoustic cavitation. And during this process, you've got pockets of expanded gaseous vapors, and when they collapse, that implosion in just a few cycles, releases infinite levels of energy, is a quote. And this, all the scientists who have written on the subject claim the same thing, again, that they don't know what's going on. They see the thing, they measure it, they photograph it, but they don't understand what's going on because it's totally foreign to the male-based science that we currently have going of, like, combustion. And this is the opening of the female force that has been occulted and hidden in old metaphysical circles for centuries. Now, what he's talking about there is, like I said, Madame Blavatsky was a fan of his work. So there were all of these metaphysicians back in the day, like Nicholas Rourke, awesome story about him going to Tibet and probably finding the inner earth civilization, and also the German Z occultist from Dub Dub Deuce had these legends of old Vril energy, V-R-I-L. And those guys literally scoured the world for all of these ancient artifacts. So there were a lot of people from like 100 years ago that thought the ancients had some incredible source of power that they used to use. This isn't a new YouTube phenomenon. It's been around for a while. But I've not heard anybody say that Keeley was trying to recreate ancient machinery. It's just that he was dealing with some etheric force that nobody could really explain, so they attributed it to, like, real energy. In Del Pond's lecture on the subject, he talks about if this sympathetic vibration can be harnessed, then theoretically you could find the harmonic resonance of whatever matter you're dealing with and disintegrate it or basically rip it in two. And Keeley is claimed to have had a machine that could do this. The Compound Disintegrator. As the story goes, some investors had bought a gold mine that had gold in the bedrock, but it was too labor-intensive to actually get it out and make a profit off of it. So Keeley comes in with his machine, sets it up, and within a matter of a few minutes, it had dug a hole 18 feet down into the bedrock, and then there were gold nuggets sitting on top. So the story goes. And I've heard a lot of people theorize that this must be how they built the ancient structures. Any answer other than hard work is a good one. <laughs> but here's the problem that I have with that claim. So you have this big slab of bedrock, like what's claimed in the story, and this machine takes off doing its thing, and it disintegrates a hole 18 feet down, and since it's set to the vibrational resonance of the stone, it doesn't hurt the gold, and the gold's still there. Well, let's talk physics here. Matter can be neither created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred from one state to another. So if you did have a machine that started disintegrating all of the rock down below it, well, then what you'd have is disintegrated rock dust. The molecules that were a rock don't just disappear. They can disintegrate and come apart and no longer have their covalent bonds, but all of that matter would still be there. And sure, rocks are porous, so when you disintegrated it, it would compact a little bit. But I don't think there's any way that this just 
disintegrated down 18 feet. It's the same principle when I hear people talking about geopolymers saying that they just grew all of this rock. Well, even a living, growing organism is only growing because it's drawing in nutrients and molecules from outside. So if you had some geopolymer cookie dough, and let's say that's the case, you've got this dough and it grows into a rock, well, it has to be fed something to grow that rock. Nothing can be created out of nothing, except for the universe and the Big Bang, evidently. But in order to grow a huge geopolymer stone, you're going to have to put tons and tons of raw material into it for it to transform it into a stone. It can't just come out of thin air. You can't produce a hundred ton stone out of pure YouTube speculation. That mass has to come from somewhere. So geopolymer is an interesting idea, but I've heard people just take it way too far, like the cliff dwellings in Colorado I've been there. It's on top of this huge mountain, and it's these big, huge, overhanging rocks that span for hundreds of yards up these canyons that are almost canyons that are almost inaccessible. And I don't think they grew a whole mountain so that they could have a little bit of an overhang. These were because they were scared of something coming out of the sky. I'm telling you, about a 20 mile walk and. 5,000 feet lower in elevation right there is a huge sprawling valley, great for agriculture and everything. And these guys were living up in the crags for a reason. Anyway, I don't buy the story of the compound disintegrator working like they say. But just because one thing might be incorrect, that doesn't mean write somebody completely off. Stories like that could be circulated you know, by a smear campaign. But I don't think that university presidents and Tesla and all of these people were fooled by some gimmick with compressed air. Some of their esoteric explanations for this was that Keeley's own life force was what was making these work, which to me is a little on the woo-woo side. But another story was how he could turn the machine on just using violin notes. You turn it on and off. Anyway, if you're into this kind of thing, definitely look into the Del Pond lecture on it. I will try to leave it in the description. But he does a couple hour explanation going into way more detail than I can do. And he might have been on to something. You know, what was cool about back in that time, it were a lot of intellectuals had their own labs, had their own place to work. And if you were smart enough and had the freedom of thought, you could come up with things like this. But now... DuPont owns all of the engineers. Nobody actually works for themselves. All the patents are going to go to this big mega corporation. And if it's going to hurt their profits by like making the internal combustion engine obsolete, then it's going to get filed in the junk. But Keeley's story is definitely one of the most plausible that I've heard for somebody just tapping into an unknown energy source. Meanwhile, they're telling us that if we can just land on the south pole of the moon, then there's ice there so we can make all the rocket fuel we want to go to Mars. (laughs) You know what? Screw Mars. I want to get to work back and forth every day off of a glass of water. How about we get the world to that point and then you can tell me about your Mars fairy tales. Static out.